So one thing that happened here is that there was no completed line when I did this. I gotta move that over. It bothers me. So once I complete this line, what I'm going to need to do is actually destroy every single one of these things, and everything that's above that Y position needs to move down one row. Boy, that was a lot of red shapes now that I look at it. In order to do that, I need to check across a row and see if there are 10 of them in a row. To complete lines, right after I do this shape, actually right before I do this shape, I'm going to want to check for a completed line. Complete. Completed lines. There we go. I know how to spell. And actually, since I'm nearby, the other section of code that needs this, we'll call completed lines here as well. So this is the piece of code that's going to check to see if I have a completed line. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my controller block, the one that's invisible and not the screen, and have it move across from left to right, starting in the bottommost row. And it'll slowly move up the screen, checking as I go. It'll basically check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 across, and if that count is 10, it'll go back across, destroy those, move everything above it down, and then check again. If it gets partway up and finds a completed line, it'll destroy there, and only move those from the Y position above that, the smaller Y values in our case, since the Y value is flipped, and move each of those down, but not mess with anything down here. We also need to make sure that it doesn't accidentally, like, destroy the walls or move those down. We only want these blocks to be moved instead. This is going to involve a lot of loops. We're going to be walking through a lot of different blocks in order to do this. Let's begin with the for loop. For loop requires three pieces. We're going to need to figure out where we're going to start. So the row is the vertical spot. So it's going to be at 400, well, game height, minus, it's not 20 because that's the bottom wall, so it's going to be 40. It's going to be the first point you're going to need to be able to check. We're going to keep going up until we reach the top of the screen, I suppose, so row is greater than or equal to 0. And each time we jump up, we're going to subtract 20 from it. We're going up by blocks each time. Okay, every time that we go up, we're going to need to reset our count of how many times we've actually collided with something. So I'm going to use this count to count how many times we've collided with another block. Now we're going to need to go across. So how many columns we have is there's going to be 10 columns. It's going to start at 20. And it's going to keep going until you reach, well, it's going to be 20 plus 10 times 20, so 200. So it's going to basically go across until we reach 220, because we know that's where the end is going to be. And we're going to add 20 each time that we do this. So to do a particular test, we're going to need to move our controller to that spot. So we're going to set it equal to the column for the X position. Y position is going to be the row. Then we're going to say, hey, did you hit something? So if the controller hits something, so if it's not negative one, and it's not a wall or some other random thing, it's one of those static blocks. So the way we're going to check for that is we're going to do that same command. For the controller, except we're going to put that index into this array of objects. So this is the master array of objects that has all of the different game objects in the game. So if the thing we just hit, if its class tag is static, so it's one of those solid blocks that we already established, and hey, that is a collision, and we should add one to our count. 
Once we get done with this whole loop, this for loop here, that has the column for loop. So this is the if statement closing. This is the column for loop closing. If we get done with that, and count is 10, hey, we completed the line. Go us. We need to walk through that same exact for loop again. So I'm just going to copy this and move it up here and destroy each of these objects. So we're going to set the x again to the column, the y position equal to the row, and then we need to actually go through again and grab basically this command here, the object at that collision that the controller just had. And we're going to say dot destroy to remove it from the game. So that's great for destroying one thing. We should probably move things down, but we've done a whole bunch of typing here and I'm a little paranoid, so let's check and see if this works. Rather than having to worry about trying to get exactly the right shapes and being really good at this, I'm going to cheat. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this nothing but blocks. controllers up here. I should probably move that back to off the screen when I'm all done with this. Blam! And they're gone. Now, if I do this, where I leave a block in the way, you'll see something that doesn't happen yet, which is it doesn't move the blocks above that down yet. All right, very good. So a couple things I need to do at the bottom of this. I need to move my controller off the screen again. Where is the equal sign here? That's necessary. All right. So this will destroy the blocks but the other issue is once I move them down, I'm going to need to recheck the row again. So I should make sure that if the count is 10, I'm going to go back and recheck the row because I might have moved a complete line into the one I was just in. Okay. So I'm going to need to walk through all of my objects and check their Y position. I can do that with a for loop that goes through everything in the array of objects. So array index is basically the last element in the array of all the objects in that master list. And we can go through and say, hey, are you one of those static objects? If your position is above whatever row we're currently checking, and this is two ampersands, that means logical and, if the objects class tag is one of those static thingies. Then we need to move you down. So that thing's Y position now needs to be 20 below where it was. If I didn't have the static thing, it would move all the walls down too, and the controller and everything else, so that's why I have to watch out for that. Let's set up that one example I had before. There we go. So now it moves everything down. Beautiful. 